Thank you. Good morning. I have to stand here. If I stand over there, I have to stand on a box, so don't let me move. I am impressed with the turnout this morning. I kept telling Michael that I was confident we were the highlight of the conference and people were going to be so excited to be here. And I was actually kidding because I figured everyone would be gone. And now look at all of you. And I realize you had a lot of options this morning. I see there was a Star Wars 5K going on. Did anybody else catch that? That was interesting. Like running a 5K in a Darth Vader costume. That is impressive. So instead, we're going to talk about CRMs and document management, which is nearly as thrilling. So thank you. Um, Marla and I are going to do this together and, and kind of take different pieces of the presentation. What I would like to do is start out by kind of going over what our intention is with the presentation and give you some background on our firm. Our goal here in, and what we're looking for in the audience is to talk with people who are either looking to begin an integration or who have an integration with their CRM and their document management system and want to further it. If you're not one of those, we need you to leave the room. Kidding, you can stay. Everyone is welcome. So like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about our firm and who we are and, and, and uh, what we look like. And then we're going to talk about Juncture and Laserfiche and how those two work together. And at the end, we do want to talk about some other integrations that we've got and some plans that we have for the future. Fair? OK. There we go. OK. so. I think it's important to understand our company in order to really get a good picture of what we've built and why we built it. So, and I hear a lot of times people say, oh, our, our firm is different, our firm is different. Yes, we're all different. We're all um, kind of working in this craziness in various ways. Um, but one of the things that is particularly challenging for us is that we are a wealth management firm inside a much larger accounting firm. So we have a, a number of different aspects that we have to deal with. Our parent company is Raymond, and Raymond is made up of our CPAs, our wealth advisors, and our corporate investigative services. Our CPAs are exactly like what they sound. That's in our Raymond Robson branch, and we do tax planning and assurance services and a number of, um, of other services that we offer to those clients. That's actually where our company started. So when you're in Michigan and, and you hear Raymond, most people associate it with the accounting firm because that's where it all began. We also have our corporate investigative, uh, investigative services division. This is where the good stuff happens. This is the interesting piece of our firm where, you know, someday they're going to make like CSI Kalamazoo and this is who they will make it after because they do kind of juicy stuff like IT fraud prevention and background checks and they have, I mean, literally we have people in that division who like go through dumpsters and um, they, they do all these crazy fraud investigations. It's good stuff. These are like at the corporate meetings, these are the people you want to talk to because they have some really good stories. Um, but also there's a lot of security involved, there's a lot of crossover of clients. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get them here someday to tell you some stories. And then there's our division. This is where Marla and I live with the wealth advisors. And within Raymond Financial, we don't just do wealth management. We, we do financial planning. We do consulting. We do insurance. We have an entire retirement plan division that handles all of our retirement plan services and uh, does TPA work as well. So even within our small group, we have then several other subsets within that. So to break it down further, uh, Marla and I both work in Michigan, but Raymond Financial is actually spread out through 17 offices. Our parent firm has 22 offices. We're in 17 of them. And of those 17, we are in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Florida. Why we aren't in the Florida office, I have not figured out yet. Big mistake there, but we're, we're up in Michigan. We have 120 staff, and although we have a number of different roles, we really kind of break them down into three basic categories, and those are our financial advisors, our administrative support, and then our professional staff. And that would be people who do like our investment planning and our um, uh, investment research, uh, sort of that level between administrative support and advisor, but working behind the scenes. We are an RIA. We work with broker-dealer, Royal Alliance. We are in the process of becoming a limited broker-dealer. And then we also offer TPA services as well. So we thought one was just too boring. Why not have to, to uh, 
you know, make things a little more complicated and just do it all. And then the icing on the cake, we have our internal associates who are employees of Raymond Financial, and we also have what we call our independent advisors. They are not employees of our firm, but they do fall under our OSJ, so we are responsible for them for compliance oversight and uh, you know, making sure that they follow all the fund policies and procedures, but they're not associates of our firm and they're not located in our firm offices. And I think that's, that one is a really important one to mention because it also then adds another layer of some logistical challenges as well. Plus, since they're not employees, they don't listen to us, you know? They're kind of like, yeah, hey, we'll do what we want to do. All the responsibility, but none of the authority. Okay, industry issues. I think this is the stuff that you guys, hopefully if you work in wealth management, are familiar with and would say, yeah, these are struggles that we all face. High cost of operations, that is not just strictly limited to wealth management, I realize that, but um, the cost of, of running an operationally efficient firm has gotten, you know, I think it continues to grow, and, it, and that is a challenge, especially as I'm working through the budgeting process recently, and I was telling Marla I have added a few new gray hairs as a result. Um, there's also the, the increasing and changing regulations, and that just never seems to end, and it keeps getting more and more complicated. And I know I've had the pleasure of even talking with a few of you about the, the most recent regulations that are out there and the changing regulations. We just finished an SEC audit, and um, you know, it's kind of a fun <laughs> opportunity to say, you know, surprise, here are the seven things you did know, and here are the 25 you didn't know. So really trying to stay ahead of that and, um, and on top of that is important. There's also the increasing and changing needs of the clients. And I feel like I've, I've been in this industry for 12 years now and seeing what the clients want and what they need over that period of time has changed dramatically and it continues to change. And then finally, technology and security. And security is another huge topic. And as, as we you know, look to become more operationally efficient and keep up with all of the regulations and be available to our clients, we have to think and spend a lot of time being concerned with keeping our clients safe and secure and their information safe and secure. Specific to us, we've gone through a lot of very rapid growth, and that's exciting, and it keeps our jobs really interesting, but it's extremely challenging as well. And as you grow, as our firm has grown, and as we've grown so quickly, we've done it through bringing advisors, smaller firms in and merging them into our firm, which means they had their own ways of doing things, they had their own ideas they were bringing to the table, they had a set way that they were working. And as we kind of all come together as one, it has been extremely challenging to unify everything. Um, we also, maybe four years ago, started getting feedback from our team that some of the training was inconsistent, that depending on who that person spoke with, they may get a different answer or a different way of doing things. And I, I, you know, the, the team that we work with in all of our offices came to us and said, we want it to be more consistent. We, we don't want to feel like we're going to get a different answer depending on who we talk to. That didn't make them comfortable. I certainly understand that. Um, and so that was an area that we really focused on because it was something that we felt was a weakness of ours. The need for comprehensive oversight, again, we're spread out in so many different offices with so many different advisors doing things in so many different ways. We really needed a way to, to keep control of that and to monitor everything. And then, again, going back to our logistical challenges, we really wanted to be more efficient but still be able to have this diverse environment and have everybody spread out and, and let, the, let our advisors and our teams do what they wanted to do in the way they wanted to do it, but still have it be an efficient process. So those were all the things we were looking at as, as our challenges that were unique to us. So what did we do about that? Well, we decided to start with CRM and document management. And too overwhelming to do both at once, so we, we uh, started just focusing on CRM and this was back in 2007 and at that time our firm had multiple advisors and actually we had about four different CRMs that people were using because they had merged in although one of those one of the advisors counts his yellow notebook pad as his CRM and I think that's questionable but um, so we had all these different ways of doing things and we decided we need one CRM across the board for the firm and so we ended up working with Juncture very happy with that choice wonderful system Juncture is you know it, it keeps us running and we live by the mantra, if it's not in juncture, it didn't happen. And, and people have really bought into that and, and used the system and put everything in there. 
About a year later, we said, all right, we can handle this. We got that CRM stuff down. Let's add in document management. And so we started using LaserFish in 2008. And that was a really interesting process and kind of freaked people out a little bit. I, I, for some reason, letting go of the paper was terrifying for a lot of people in our offices. I don't know what it was, like a comfort thing or something, but that was, that was almost more difficult, I feel like, in getting people to buy into it than the CRM piece of it was. Once we got them there, though, they were great. They dove right in and loved it. So these two systems, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but these really are what keeps our firm running. We, we couldn't function without these two programs. There are a number of other ones that we use, but this is where the good stuff happens. So when we started with LaserFish, we were a little bit um, overwhelmed isn't a good word, but we were trying to figure out what's the best way to even begin. Where, I mean, you, again, you have to picture we have all these offices, we have all this paper, we have all these filing cabinets, everybody has a way of doing things, and they don't mind coming up with one consistent way of doing it as long as it's their way and not the other guy's way. So it was that, that beginning, that first plunge, that like where do we even start, that, I think, was the hardest part. And then after that, we kind of got our momentum. So we decided just to pick a day and say, from this day forward, we're scanning. We'll deal with all the other stuff later. The filing cabinets will be OK for now. We'll just pick this day, June 1st of 2008, and everything from that day forward will scan. And that worked well. People were, people were able to, to wrap their minds around that and be comfortable with that. We also chose just one document type. We said, we'll make it really easy. This is the form we're going to scan, starting June 1st. Any Client agreement, you get in, you're going to scan it into the system. That was too simplistic. They all said, well, if we can scan this, why can't we scan that? And pretty soon we were scanning in everything. So that didn't last very long. They wanted to scan every single type of document. We also picked out a couple of special projects so that we had a really specific thing we could focus on and kind of get the team together and, and work on, hey, let's tackle you know, all, of, all of our client notes, or I don't even remember what the different, top, the different projects were, but we picked a few specific ones that we could have people work on, and it gave them a sense of immediate gratification and an accomplish, a feeling of accomplishment so that they knew, okay, we tackled, you know, project A is done, yay, and we'd have little pizza parties and stuff, and, it's amazing what we'll do for food. So, um, And then finally, we went back to the legacy files, because that was the thing that, that was driving me crazy, were all those old documents that are in the filing cabinets and the hallways of all the various offices. So that came further down the road, but we did go back and get all of that into the system. So here we are, making progress, doing good, much better than we had been. We have a CRM. We have document management. Now we even have some stuff scanned into it. We are like, yay, we're amazing. And then we decided, well, it's kind of silly to have these two programs so separate. We need to make them work together. And I realize that's kind of an obvious step, but it took us a minute to get there. So how did we integrate? Well, we called our VAR and said, help. And they were amazing. They were wonderful. We give them all the credit. Um, we started by looking at Juncture and saying, OK, our clients sort of begin in our CRM. When we get a client, that's where we start. We put it in the CRM. So. Why don't we have our CRM tell LaserFish what to do next? And so that was really our first key point of integration. It's not really anything fancy. It's, you know, if you think about it, it's rather basic, but it, it, meant, it meant a lot to us. It, I think it made a huge impact. So we would create a client in Juncture, and Juncture would walk over to LaserFish and say, hey, guess what? We've got a new client. Build a folder structure. And that little piece, the peop, our team really responded well to that. They really liked having that automatically occur. And then we started seeing consistency among all of our offices as far as what information was in Juncture and the corresponding information in LaserFish. We also, through that integration, now gave our advisors the ability to obtain documents from within Juncture, and they really, really liked that, so that they could be in Juncture on the record. This is the place where they work. This is the place where they are most often, and they can quickly go to the top of the screen and click on a laser fiche button and then see the documents for that client. That was an important piece, again, fairly simple, That you know, that I think Sometimes it's the simple things that have the greatest impact because now our advisors are starting to buy into it and go, oh, okay, you just made my life easier. So all of this technology stuff you're talking about actually is good and at my fingertips now. So the last piece was um, we could link documents to specific actions. And assuming that many or most of you are using some type of CRM and you have those actions in there, 
the ability to say, here's a task that I did and here's the corresponding document and they're right together, that had a huge impact. And it just made it so much easier to follow somebody's train of thought. And it made it easy if you had to go back and figure out what happened and why, having everything together, you can actually solve those puzzles. Um, earlier in the session we were in before this, Deborah was mentioning that having these systems allows people to cover for each other if somebody's out, if they're on maternity leave, if they're sick, if somebody just doesn't show up to work. Having the, the documents and the actions linked together is a great example that popped into my mind when she was saying that, that those, having that link right there, you can go back in and recreate what they were doing instead of calling them and saying, sorry you have the flu, but what were you doing here? The other big piece for us was related to compliance, everybody's favorite topic. Um, you know, this is a, a big part of what we do every day, the compliance piece of it, and making sure that we are compliant and that we're monitoring everything that goes on and that we're you know, doing what we need to do. And so when we were looking at integrating our CRM and document management, we looked at it from a compliance perspective so that we could make sure that this area was covered. And there were a few things that came clear to us right away. The first is that we could automate a lot of what we were doing by, by working with those two programs together. A few examples on here, back in the old days, we used to create the check logs or blotters and the correspondence blotters and all of that kind of stuff. That was no longer necessary because of the integration that was all automatically created and our compliance team could just run a report of whatever they needed to see and no, we no longer had to create those logs. It's wonderful for disaster recovery, which um, has been a big initiative, making sure that we have all of that information available and that we know what to do. And you know, you hear disaster recovery and think, oh, you know, big horrible things, but we've had so many disasters in the past four years. I mean, little things. The building lost power. Somebody drove recently a bus into a into a pole near one of our offices, and the entire two blocks had no power for two days. So there are small disasters that occur all the time, and having these systems set up and fully functioning and integrated means minimal impact to us because we're able to still access that information and keep everything running. And then the last piece is real-time auditing. So when we Back before we had Juncture and Laserfish and before we had them working together, for our compliance team, they really would once a year go out to each of these offices and sit down and go through the files and pull random pieces and then go, oh wait, you've been doing this wrong for a year. Man, go back and redo it all. And that doesn't seem to work. With <coughs> Juncture and Laserfish, they're able to audit all the time on a regular basis. A document comes in and they can take a look at it and tell you right away hey, this one piece of paper that you just put into the system an hour ago is wrong or it's missing a piece of information or we, we've noticed you're not capturing this and we can get out, we can attack it right then and there, get it corrected and we now have so much, our data is so much cleaner and, and um, more comprehensive and it makes it so much easier on our compliance team but it also makes it easier on our advisors and our support staff because we're no longer having to go back and do these huge cleanup projects we catch things when they occur, and then we make the change right away. And there has been um, a big impact there in, in the information that we have in our systems and in the client relationship, because we're not going back and forth to them as often for missing information. We go back and forth all the time for great client service. That's OK. OK, you want to talk workflow? So this is where it gets good because we thought we had things pretty tight and we were doing all this amazing stuff with our integration and then we decided to take it up a notch and that's where workflow comes in and that's where this stuff gets really fun. So Marla's going to talk about workflow. Yeah. yeah. It's like a danger zone back it here. Is. You have to be very careful where you walk. So when we look at workflow in our systems and the way that we want them to communicate to each other, we really want to think about the primary goal, efficiency. Fewer keystrokes for our staff and advisors, fewer times that people are touching documents, less options for people to make mistakes. Um, just really look at time saving and um, ease of use. Also, as Amy was discussing, we really wanted a centralized client file structure. So in the in event that some office was down for two days, somebody else in a different office can obtain those client documents, step in, fill the need, and go forward with the client. So we have not, 
sorry, I have to push the right button. Okay, um, so really have to push the right button, sorry. <laughs> so we have about five or six active workflows. We really wanted to simplify how we were using workflow. Um, so what we use every day, every single document that is entered into LaserFiche is auto named by workflow. So a support or an advisor can scan a document into LaserFiche, they add it, they template it in their incoming scans folder, and then they drag it to a designated folder that we've determined workflow will recognize and it automatically renames them. So it's consistent, it's easy to find when you're in one client structure versus another, you can quickly locate the document you're looking for if you don't want to do a full search of the repository. About 50% of our documents are, we are able to auto file. So the extra step, you drag it into that designated folder, workflow renames it, it recognizes the client and it moves it to the appropriate client structure. We are expanding that continually and looking for ways to make that to a 100% um, and that is upcoming and I'm excited to get really into that. Um, we also use dynamic list creation, so that goes into the auto filing feature um, where workflow helps with generating those fields that help to auto route the client documents. Um, as Amy was discussing compliance review, we, in addition to creating the blotters, we also use this for the ability to instantaneously review client agreements, broker-dealer forms. Um, it's a centralized place for the staff to understand where, where compliance is going to find things. Um, and then also something that we've implemented in the last few years is a centralized new client setup and account opening process. So previously we had um, every staff assistant was doing their own processing, opening their new, their new accounts, adding all of their new client structures, and we really, really wanted to get to a point where our support person for a specific advisor can spend their time servicing the client because that's how we all make money. That's why we're employed, that's what we do. And we wanted to provide a really awesome client experience. So a couple years ago, Amy, another um, person in our department and I were sitting in a room thinking, how do we do this? Centralized, and so we built this workflow and it's amazing. And I wanna add to this, I can't yell that loud, sorry. <laughs> We have five or six workflows right now. About a year and a half ago, we had 40, yeah. 45. I mean, it was ridiculous. We had so many workflows. And we were a good example of somebody doing it wrong. We made it way too complicated. And we sat down with our VAR, and it was, one, oh, it was so great. It was like cleaning out that closet with just clutter everywhere. We were able to simplify it down. We now have better workflows. And we only have five or six of them where we used to have 40. So when you're troubleshooting and you have 40 workflows to look through and figure out which one's going wrong, it was a nightmare. It was a mess. So it's good to do it wrong sometimes. You learn a lot and you appreciate so much more. And this might seem like a short list, but I think it's just beautiful. I'm so glad. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can keep it really simple and it can still be really powerful. Absolutely. Sorry. That's okay. So what did we do? When we, I'm gonna dive a little more into our centralized client setup. Previously, as Amy was talking when we started with Juncture and Laserfiche, our first step was Juncture. You create the client file in Juncture and then you know it goes to Laserfiche. We've changed that mode of thinking. Laserfiche is now our first location for new clients. So the support person for the advisor takes a packet of information. We've created um, template documents, cover sheets that they fill out the information that they wanted in, to add into Juncture, personal information and all of that for the centralized team to use. Um, and I have a better slide next, so I'll get a little bit more, but these are the processes that we have. Standardized request forms, laser fiche workflow, and unfetter fiche are our two major processes that are functioning in this workflow. This is a very linear and simple <laughs> visual of this workflow. It, there's a lot of moving parts in it um, in real life, but this is the best visual that I could come up with. So, the client comes in, they open a new account, they say, I want you to be my advisor. The support person takes all of the account opening paperwork, so custodian documentation, um, RIA agreements, IPS forms, and this cover sheet, they scan it all in one neat file and it goes to the centralized processing team. 
They take the information for the client that we need to put into the CRM system, they generate the juncture record. And then Unfetter Fiche generates the file structure in Laser Fiche, and then they begin pulling those documents apart. So um, separating the agreements so then it routes to compliance for review, the files get renamed by workflow and then filed into the client file structure. So 50% of the documents are out of routed and the other ones are moved manually. Um, it's It's been two years now that we've been using this process and it's we've learned a lot from when we started and we're continuing to streamline and find ways to make this more efficient. Our laser fiche and juncture is never done. We don't look at CRM and laser fiche as ever being finished. We can always be better, always. And so this process is going to continue to change as the years go and I think it's going to get even better with some of the exciting things that we're gonna do. Forms. Oh, yay, forms. Um, soon. Well, and it's, it, it, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but when from the user's standpoint, you kind of scan it in and it goes. So right. we're, we're showing you everything that's happening, you know, with workflow, automating, and auto routing, and all of that. Um, but workflow workflow's carrying the brunt of the work there, not, not the user, not mm -hmm. the administrative person. Yep. So another thing that we really wanted to do for our staff was centralized statement processing. And the way that we've determined to do that is through several processes, which our VAR helped substantially develop this because it was, it's a heavy lifting workflow. Um, it does a lot. Um, so what we use in this instance is import agent, quick fields, our juncture, juncture SQL tables, and workflow. So import agent, our, so our staff goes to the custodian or depending on the custodian, we're able to automatically have the files downloaded and sent to us. So then you take it, take the PDF version of the statements that are added, drag them into LaserFiche through Import Agent, and then run a quick field, we developed a quick field session. So quick field takes the information off from the statement for very limited items. It pulls the account number, it pulls on the first run. Nope, it just pulls the account number on the first run. And we've determined, you know, preset, this is going to be a fidelity statement. This is going to be a purging statement. So there's different quick field sessions that we're using. Um, so we fill in as much of the template as a base that we can, and then quick fields uses the account number from the statement to then go to the juncture SQL, pull in all of the other client information that we can as far as the advisor of record, <laughs> the client name, everything that we would want in, the, in that template would then come from the SQL. So then it goes back into quick fields and then workflow takes it and workflow renames the document, locates the client file structure based off from the juncture identifier, adds it to the client file structure and it's there. Templated, PDF removed, TIFF file, everything. So again, this is a very complex situation that's going on here that took several months for us to build and work accurately, but once it's going, you know, it just, the support staff, they bring the document into LaserFiche, and the next thing they know, it shows up in the client file structure all neat and tidy, so. So what do we see as a benefit of using LaserFiche in CRM? We no longer need a one-to-one -one advisor support staff ratio, where when we were paper version or less centralized, you know, you had to have an assistant in each office where an advisor was because they had to be the ones that were there, taking the paper, sending it, mailing it to the custodians, mailing it back to the client, really processing, heavy processing. But as we just saw, we can now do that from a centralized location. We have three individuals on our processing team who does the new client additions, um, new accounts, all of that. So what happens is no matter, so somebody from Florida can scan this document into LaserFiche, and the team that is primarily in Troy, right? Yeah, Troy, is able to, in Michigan, is able to then take care of most everything for the support staff, so it's really reduced the number of staff that we need. Um, it's also reduced the number of part-time help and temporary help that we need. So say somebody goes on maternity leave, we can cover that with a different office, or somebody is, 
sick and they're out for several weeks. We can cover that with the team that we have. So it's been a very large benefit to our firm and a re reduced cost in, in what we are experiencing. It also eliminates cleanup projects. You know, as Amy was discussing earlier, we are able to locate problem and in, in, in issues nearly instantaneously through auditing reporting. So, you know, if we see somebody is having trouble with, you know, this maybe they chose a, it's a check and they chose a security or something along those lines. We're able to quickly address that issue. It causes less of a cleanup on the back end, which everybody appreciates because then you don't feel like all I'm doing is fixing what I did before. That's never good. Um, and then it also, we had a very successful SEC audit. Um, and Amy was in the interview, but um, when we were wrapping up with their in-visit, in-office visit, they were very impressed, I think is the best word. And that's a tough crowd. I don't know how many of you have gone through that, but they're not the friendliest people. I mean, they were fine, but like I got reprimanded for offering them popcorn. Sorry. They're like, we can help ourselves, but if you offer it, it's a bribe. So this was a tough <laughs> crowd, right? We right. have really good popcorn at my office, so I can see why. But, but at the end of the audit, they, the one thing they did say, which was you know, great to hear, was we are so impressed with how quickly you guys were able to get us everything we asked of you. And I said I give 100% credit to Juncture and Laserfiche for that. That was, I mean, we just, everything they asked, we quickly did. And we didn't know what they were going to ask, so these weren't reports or things that we already had built that we could click on. These were things we were able to do on the fly and get it right to them. Mm -hmm. And again, we've got, I, last time I looked, we were just shy of 7,000 clients in the system. We were at 12,000-ish accounts in the system. And this is a lot of data that we're slicing right. and dicing and pulling to report to them. So these tools, they were amazing. Right. And the size of our repository is not small. The last document I added, I think it was a million five hundred thousand I think so we have a pretty substantial system that we were e easily able to pull information that we needed for the SEC um, so now we can't wait for our next audit we're yay come on back out we'll pop the popcorn now <laughs> right so what are we gonna do now so as I was saying we never look at CRM and laser features being done um, forms is definitely something that we are going to be jumping into and very heavily and I'm very excited about it. External repositories. Um, three weeks ago we opened web access for our external associates to begin using. So we are building, actively building those repositories, mirror, mirror, making them identical to, <laughs> <laughs> to what our internal employees are seeing because then it gives our staff that does work with them the same feeling so they don't have to think okay I'm in this repository for this office now where do I have to go to find it no we want workflow to function exactly the same as it does we want uh, the staff to have the same feel so we're opening that functionality to more more and more over the next year we're going to continue looking into Juncture Cloud right now we are running um, on client there were certain things that were not available but we are continuing to look into it, plus the laser fish integration. So um, I'm excited about some of the things that are coming down the pipe on that. And then more automation. We really just want to make it so that, you know, we can scan a document into laser fish and it pulls everything that we need off from the file structure. We don't have to key in in multiple locations anymore. We just really want to focus on freeing up time so that our staff can really focus on superior customer service. That's all. So if there's any questions, we would be more than happy. Yes? So um, when you're, what you were talking about just then about your external repositories and making it seem, is that how you're communicating with the documents back and forth with people who are outside of your organization? Correct, correct. Can you go into that a little bit more? Sure. So, yep. Um, in this example, our we have named users for the external repository, but they are not... Um, um, Right, but they don't have um, active directory? Yes, they're not in our active directory. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so there's not automatic login. So they log in with a password. They're able to import from web access documents that we can, we will need them. So client agreements, 
um, new account applications, everything that we would need to oversee for um, supervision purposes, they are at import into web access. It looks the same. Um, so our repository, it, I, I shouldn't say the same. There is some differences on the web version versus the um, client version, but it looks very similar. Um, and they can template in there, and then it gets routed for compliance review, and it's, so it's, you just set up a user in your admin console, give them the password permission, and then determine the repository that you want them to have access to, and it's pretty straightforward. And so you're kind of keeping them on the outside of your, right. that you're using workflows to pull that document. So they're dropping it into a folder, and then workflow is saying, oh, I've got something, and then pulling it into the real Nope, folder. it's all it's separate. Staying. Yeah. Yep, it's all within the same repository. So they add, so as you log into client, um, and you are able to move documents around and workflow is recognizing it. It's doing the identical thing, but all they're doing is logging in through a website versus um, a client version of the program. And, and they're it, limited then in right. what they can see and do. And it, it makes it easier for us to set permissions and to track what they have um, access to and how they have that access, what they're allowed to do. When we first started using Rio, I remember thinking, okay, we can have as many repositories as we want. Who cares? I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. And now I love it, and I love being able to have multiple repositories and to be able to keep things organized. Again, it was like cleaning out our closet and making everything all neat and tidy. And, and we're starting now to really understand the power of having those multiple repositories um, as far as permissions and, and um, access and, and keeping things where we want them to be. Mm -hmm. Did you copy data back and forth to the Some. Not all. Yeah. It, I, once they're fully up and running, um, no, their repository will primarily be their repository. So we'll know, you know, to go find John, John's client agreements, we have to go to his repository. So they don't manage, like you don't have internal people that also are managing the same clients as an external person? No. But they could, I mean, I guess in some ways, yes, compliance is overseeing all of this, but to our compliance people, because of the access they have, they are seeing everything they need to see through multiple repositories. Right. For the advisor who can only see certain things, they're only able to see. So when it is somebody who needs to see everything, they can see everything across, right. yes. And you can, from client, you can be logged into multiple repositories at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Bring you the mic so that the uh, video can hear. Can you give examples of what you're using the multiple repositories for? So one may be active clients, one may be... Um, our best example, the way we're using it right now is for our independent advisors as opposed to advisors who are employees of our firm. And so that each, each independent group has their own repository so that we're keeping... Um, those advisors who are not employees, who are not part of Active Directory, who don't have the same access rights as associates of our firm, they have a separate place for their information. They're also accessing the system in a different way. They're not using the client, they're using web access. So that's kind of our differentiator right now. I have ideas for other ways we're gonna use it down the road. I want to, right now we're doing a little bit of our administrative work, so our, our corporate work, you know, finance and HR and all of that kind of fun stuff. We do a little bit of that. We keep some of that in Laserfiche now. I'm looking to expand that in the coming year and do a lot more with that. Once we have forms, we're gonna start routing a lot of our internal stuff and I envision having a separate repository for that stuff that's not client related, it's business related. Do you happen to know what other uh, CRMs Laserfiche can integrate with besides Juncture? Many, all, every, right? I don't know of a CRM that it right. doesn't integrate with, yeah. Yeah, Laserfiche is amazing at how well it integrates with other programs. Um, yeah, they, they, do, they do a good job of that. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, isn't there a maximum number of repositories that you can use? Uh, if there is, I haven't reached it. Hmm? <laughs> I don't know. Anybody from Laserfiche know the answer to that? I thought it was as unlimited with Rio. As far as I know, Rio. Rio can't use more than 15. I thought with Rio it was unlimited, but I could be wrong. That I don't know. We, we would... Per server. Per server? Per server. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Anything else? Other questions? 
No? We really appreciate everybody taking the time to listen to us talk about this. So, oh, one more. Can you talk a little bit more about your unfetter fiche? What is that? So unfetter fiche is an integration between juncture and laser fiche that our VAR wrote. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a very specific to those two programs integration with a really weird name. Yeah. It, links, yeah. it links our CRM. So when Amy was discussing clicking the laser fiche button inside of juncture, that's unfetter fiche. Yes. So going from four, over 40 workflows to six, mm -hmm. um, were all of your workflows basically doing something linear? Were you guys like calling one workflow after the other? Is that why you just made it one workflow? Or I was wish it you could see the mess we had created in there. <laughs> we were left alone with workflow for too long because we had these workflows that had branch after branch after branch, and we had it separated out by, broken out by office, and then another branch for the five advisors in the office, and I mean, it was, a ma this is embarrassing, it was bad. We, what we did was terrible. And what we found in actually working with the experts, calling our VAR, was that we could just look at certain fields, instead of you know having it break out by each office, say, we could just have workflow look to see the who the advisor was, and then, is that all? Oh, okay. It got quiet for a second. Um, it could look to see who the advisor was, and then it knows which office that advisor works in. And it So we had all these extra layers of branches that we didn't need. And then on top of it, we had a separate workflow for each thing where, again, by looking at things, simple things like document type or I, I don't even remember, uh, you know, items that were tagged as needing compliance or approval, we didn't need to have four different ones. We could just, if it's yes, do this. If it's no, do that. And we really only... <clears throat> all, all workflows run off from our primary auto name workflow. So we are, our starting, if you look in our workflow um, dashboard, most of our workflows don't look like they have any starting conditions because the starting condition is built into an, uh, the main workflow. So it says, this is a client agreement, so you're going to rename it this, and then you're going to invoke this workflow. So um, that, that's another feature that we really were able to streamlined so that it's we're, it's not breaking anymore because we don't have, you know, a new advisor was hired and we forgot to add him to this workflow or and then maybe three other ones that he should have been in and now it's just there. It's done. We got excited with all the power and yeah. we just were building stuff and creating things yeah. all over the place and there were a few things that we, we had documents with these big, huge, long names mm -hmm. and like, why we had all of this in the name of the document was so silly because it's in the metadata and so it was, we did a lot of goofy things at the yeah. beginning and the lesson that I have learned and I continue to learn this all the time is simple is great, simple is good, keep it simple. It does not have to be that complicated. It can still work really well and, and be very powerful but it doesn't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Wonderful. Well, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, thank Amy you. and Marla. Thank you, everybody. Else. Thank you. Thank you.